Big Ed here. We have our cases right now uh, tumbling on our Hornady tumbler right here. So we'll get ahead and uh, shut it off in about an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. Go ahead and shut it off and uh, strain them out of there and see what they look like. So the first thing we're going to do is we got to get a little lube on these things. I'm going to use a little one-shot uh, case lube by Hornady right here. I love the spray stuff. It's a little easier than the pad, a little quicker. So uh, just give them a quick little spray. Then what I do is I uh, just roll them around a little bit. Give them another little spray. And then roll them on back. That's pretty good right there. So we'll go ahead and start resizing some of these. So then the next thing we will need are our lead dies. I love buying this set of four. You just have a little more versatility with them. So we have our factory lead crimp die, our powder through expanding die. And, you know, expand so you can seat the bullet. And that is our sizing die right here and the priming die. Then next we have the bullet seating die. So the first die we're going to use is the full length resizing and depriming die. So we'll go ahead and we will screw this into our uh, RCBS press right here. Basically the way you want to do this is put your, the shell holders already in here. You can see it moving down there. Just pivot it where I like it. And put the ram in the upward position. Screw our die all the way down finger tight. So we've got a few cases here we're going to uh, resize. First just slip them into the little shell holder down there. And you can see our die is all set up. Just give the lever a pull. See the, 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 the um, primer has popped out. Goes out of the back of the ram, falls into that channel and goes on either side of the collection basin right here. And that's it right there. That is a deprimed and resized case that is number 51 and we're going to do 100 today bring you folks along for the ride so there's another one we're just going to do a few close up these are one of these nice colored ones that I think are pretty neat You know, try to keep myself organized. This one's got a little dent in it from an ejection from the good old 1911. So we'll see how this one comes up with the resizing die. It'll bring out some dents, not all of them. That looks fine to me, ready to load. So we're going to get into a rhythm right here, just so you can see the speed that we can reload some of these 45 ACP cases. And this Again, this is a single stage press, but... Uh, you just sit down, get yourself comfortable, and you can just kind of pump these out. And I've gone through, and I these some of these I loaded up a little hot with uh, Unique, and uh, I found a couple of cases that are damaged, a couple of cases with splits in them. So it's very important to go through and check your once fired brass. And as long as the case just has a, a little bend in it like that, it seems like this die is. Uh, yeah, it's pulling it right out, which is really nice. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to use the expanding die. And this will expand the uh, mouth of the casings just a little bit so we can see the bullet. So what we'll do is we'll get it started. And we'll put the ram in the up position. We're going to screw the die all the way down so it seats on the ram. So we have our case expanding die inserted here and uh, you know we just want to put a little flare in our case so we can see a bullet, you know it'll take a, it'll take a bullet. And uh, I have a bunch of bad cases that are uh, dented up a little too much from the 1911 to, uh, to reload so we're going to use these as the setup cases and then save our good cases that we have cleaned up. So. That's it. So we'll bring it back. It's basically just a trial and error thing. Just want to get it just enough flare so it'll just accept the bullet. Also just beating up your brass more. Just finger tighten that lock nut. Then let's go ahead and uh, get a fresh case here and uh, give it a roll. One that's not too badly dented. Yeah, that's perfect. Just accepting the bullet. So what you want here 
Okay, so you're just able to place the bullet here, but you can basically just see it's just accepting the bullet. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, might even reload that case. That one just looks nice. That's it right there, and we're using uh, these are zero. Um, these are full FMJ bullets, right? Full metal jacket bullets, right here. Bought these on Gun Broker. Got a thousand of them for uh, was shipping one hundred and fifty dollars. And these are you can see the back of the leads exposed, but that's uh, these are swagged, and these are uh, FMJ. So these these are really nice bullets. I just ordered some more from the same um, seller on Gun Broker, and uh, so we're really we're happy with these. So we'll go ahead and uh, gonna get a couple of these going right here. So the next thing before we um, start expanding all the uh, necks on these is we're going to use our little primer pocket cleaner to clean out all the primer pockets. And we're going to do a uh, before and after on this. You see it's got one end of the little tool is for small primers and the other end is for large primers. So we're just going to go, basically you just stick it in there, you need two hands and just give it a little twirl and it'll, you know, it's pretty much visual and then when your primer pockets clean you're good and I'm gonna go ahead and um, most of these look pretty dirty I'm gonna probably hit every single one of these and then I'll uh, we'll do a quick shot when we're done so now I'm getting ready for my uh, second stage so we have our uh, resizing die in here we have our uh, large primer cup right there Then we have our primers and we got all of our cases right here. You can see we've already got one done. So what we'll do is we have our case right here. We'll take it. We'll, and we have clean the primer pocket on this one. We'll insert it. We're opening up the mouth. And then we've inserted a little primer in the primer, in the primer arm. I much prefer to uh, prime on the press because you can actually feel it. You can actually feel it priming. It's beautiful. Just I always run my finger over it, make sure it's below the head of it, and it is. We have a good one there. So we'll get another one ready here. This one's been cleaned. Put it in there. Open up the mouth. Grab a little primer from our tray. Put it in our arm. Prime it. There we go. Very nice. Open the case. Ram down. Grab a primer. Primer arm. Very nice. So you pretty much uh, probably get the drift here. And this is also the step where I uh, put on safety glasses. You know, because you're dealing with primers, as soon as you pull out the primers and the powders, it's time to put the safety glasses on. Can't hurt. So I'm only using one hand right now, but usually when I have two hands going, I'll use both hands and I can get into a pretty good uh, rhythm with uh, two hands here, but it's a, little, it's a little tougher with one hand. Yeah, we're making headway here. It looks going to look good. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll... Uh, We'll get you in and you can see what I've started doing here. <clears throat> these primer pockets are clean right here and then these are still dirty and I'm just kind of working my three through these uh, 100 round lot right there. And those are all clean right there. All right, so we have all the, uh, we have 100 cases here. They're all prime. <clears throat> the case mouse has always all been expanded. We've been going through as we've been loading these. You know, I check about every 10th to 15th one once I got on a roll, just to make sure the bullet seats into it, and they're all, they're all seating, so we're good. You know, we, you know, over time, you know, your equipment sets in and get a good rhythm, but you still want to check it and make sure everything's okay. So today I am going to use Unique, the Alliant powder, to reload my 45 ACP. 
Just on a note, my last batch of 100 I did, I put them up to 6.5 grains of uh, Unique, which was the max charge in the uh, in the Lee book. Those were too hot. Out of, uh, I want to say, the 50 cases I shot, seven of them were split. The, you know, it wasn't good. And then there was a couple, the ejector made a, <clears throat> was making a mark in each case. So they were a little, and they felt hot when I was shooting them. So, and, you know, they were a little overpressured. So we're going to go ahead and drop the charge down to six and a half, six grains even of uh, Unique. We're actually going to do about four right now and just go test them at six grains, make sure the gun cycle is okay, and then we'll uh, come back and we're going to load the rest with uh, six grains. And then we'll just pour our powder right here into our hopper. So now it's going to be time to charge our cases and seed our bullets. So these are the bullets we're using. These are zero uh, FMJs uh, with a lead core. 230 grain ball ammunition and what we have here is our uh, bullet seating die right <clears throat> here so we're going to go ahead and install this in our press this is another one we're going to put the ram up all the way go ahead and lower the die down so that's it the dies all the way down and what we'll want to do is we want to bring it up three full turns so we'll look at this little line right here we'll go for six right there and that'll be half so it'll er be three full turns there's one two three four five six and then we'll go ahead and tighten this down so you can see we have a little bit of unique in there just enough to do a hundred rounds and uh, it might be a little light actually I might have to put a little bit more in there and we got our charge set up right here you can see there's our uh, powder there and our little measure and we have it set at six grains right there on the nose and you can see we're pretty close to zero. I'm not quite there, but with these powder measures, you can never get, you can never really hold. Very difficult to hold right on zero. So if it goes up to six point one or six point two, that's fine. I'm under the six point five. I wanted to be away from that, and uh, so uh, I'm I'm happy with that. And these it's pistol ammunition. It's right in the middle of where they're calling for. So if it's a tenth of a grain up or down, it, it's it's okay. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll load some of these up. So we've got our cases right here, so let's go ahead and uh, charge a case. Go ahead and seat it. We'll pull our priming arm out of the way. I'm going to place a projectile on top. So what I've done here is I we've inserted the bullet seating die, and I've backed out the seater right here. So I know he won't seat it all the way. So let's go ahead. I can tell by looking at it that's long. This is good to take a look at right here. The Lee Manual maximum overall case length is 1.275 inches right there. So we're going to go just below that. So this one I can tell is already, that's a little too long. So we're going to go ahead and lower it. Just tell me looking at it. That's a little too long. Go ahead and lower that. Start measuring. So we're at, ooh, getting close right there. So we're at 1.3 right there. Let's go ahead and bring it down a little bit. And yeah, that's starting to look like 45 ACP. Yeah, we're almost right there. 1.28. Go ahead and drop it just a hair. one point two seven that's it right there so we're gonna take we're gonna leave it right there and we're the our lock nuts tight and that'll stay where we've left it so that's good so we're gonna go ahead and start loading a couple of these and what we will do is we'll inspect each case make sure it has enough powder in it it does we will go ahead and we're gonna check the first two and keep on checking them. make sure we're loading correctly here This one looks good. Put a projectile. The, uh, the expanding die was very good. Just got it enough. We'll just go ahead to double check this one. Beautiful. Just under our max, right what we want. So what we'll do now is we're going to go ahead and check our, our dump. You know, after a couple of pulls on the lever, you want to make sure we're still throwing the same powder charge. 
and we'll just let that settle as we load a couple more rounds. So just wanted to show you the rhythm here. You know, drop the powder charge, seat the charge case in the press, and then go up, seat the projectile. Give it a couple, that one wasn't seated on there straight, so what I'll do is, I'll just go ahead and give it a couple taps in there to try to center before I mash it all the way down there. Um, and it basically keeps the case alive a little longer. And that uh, won't deform the case. But we just checked our charge about uh, 10 rounds ago and checked our overall length. And uh, we're good, so I'm happy. And that's always a good thing. And so just wanted to kind of show you the speed we can get here. We're making a few different steps here all at once. <clears throat> you know, to reload. And uh, you won't get a... Uh, Without a progressive press, you know, it takes a little longer, but I don't mind it, you know, and it's quite rewarding once you're done reloading your ammunition. But, uh, you know, check each one, make sure your powder charge is good. I can actually see it falling through through the little green window right here, and that's what it's for. So you can see it scoot right through that window and drop it in the case. Um, but that's it right there. We're rocking and rolling. Then we'll have to uh, crimp these, and that'll be the last step. Then we'll have 100 completed rounds of um, <clears throat> 45 ACP, actually 95. I've already shot five of them off. I wanted to do a test just to make sure we we're good, and we're right at six grains of uh, unique. And you know, it's definitely on the warmer side, but no over. Uh, there's no no marks on the cases. They weren't dented up anymore, so we're safe, you know. And uh, and it's basically right. In the middle of uh, where Lee is recommending that you uh, meter your powder, you know, between five, seven, and six and a half grains of powder. So we're in good shape here. So we have here is our factory crimp die, and this will be the final stage in reloading this 45 ACP. Um, you can kind of see it in there, the extra lip that's a little larger that'll put the crimp on it. Also what I do is I put a little line on the top of my dies that where that's the way I get a reference you know when I turn them. Um, so this is another die we're gonna put the ram all the way up. And we'll go ahead and screw this die down. Screw it down tight to the ram because this also will resize just in case there's any little buggers left with your case. This will go ahead and do a final sizing on them, you know, so you don't have a, a bad day at the range, you know. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull, pull the seating die up all the way. We will go ahead and um, you can see those are, are almost done, 45 ACP rounds. We'll go ahead and we'll put one into the press. We'll raise it up into the die, it went in smoothly. And then we're going to lower our crimp onto it and we're gonna get it hand tight. So there it is. There's finger tight right there. <clears throat> what they say is you want to go a half a turn for a light crimp and you want to go a full turn for a heavy crimp. We're just gonna go a half a turn with this one right here. So I'll take the uh, round, I'll take it out and I will turn that up. Although you know if one half turn. So we'll go ahead and we'll press the round back into it. Let's see, we have, this works better like that. You can see it, if you see right on the lip right there, you can see the metal shining. And that's just from the fresh crimp on there, and that's perfect. It's just what we want, just a little bit. So that's a completed round right there, from uh, from an empty to a, to a hole, and that's it. So, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll do a few of these right now. Just so keep it up, see what this looks like. See, I can see it. We'll grab one of the uh, nickel plated cases right here. We'll be able to see that a little better on that case. <clears throat> yeah, you can see. Whoops, you can see that. Yeah. 
yeah actually that with that magnification you can just see that little bit of crimp on there that's just what you want it's pretty cool so we're just going to show you some speed right here uh, to crimp some of these last few rounds Quickly, we can try to get it done here. You know, and <clears throat> I like to do a hundred at a time to keep my focus. But you know, you can see each step. You know, we put the uh, round in the die, and we've used all four dies today. Um, and I'm excited about these rounds. These are, uh, you know, six grains of unique, maybe a touch light touch heavy but uh, you know we test fire them and we you know a tenth of a grain up or down on uh, pistol ammunition I'm not too concerned about but uh, that's it that's the last round so those are the finished rounds right there that's the process from start to finish so we have uh, resized Reprimed, filled the case with uh, smokeless powder and added another projectile and then crimped it all up and then we have a completed rounds of ammunition right here so we're ready to roll We've got some more range ammo so the next thing I wanted to show you this is very important you can see what I've written down here <clears throat> these are the first ones with this uh, new book of mine uh, that I've started to reload uh, 230 grain full metal jack of ball ammo, 6.5 grains of unique. Those were uh, shot 50, a little too hot. We had about seven split cases in, uh, in 50 rounds, so that's pretty good. Um, none of the primers failed. I was surprised we're even flattened out, but it was beating up the case. Then. These CCI primers, I think, are pretty strong. So this is what we did today. That was our range, 5.7 to 6.5 grains of unique for the 45. So we went with six grains of unique, and we tested out five of those, and they're right on, right on the money. So, and then I, I have another area over here, and I'll write my notes down here. And you can see here's some of my nine millimeter I've done recently, and I've worked up my load six point three, six six. 6.8 with the HS6 and then I have some H6.8 right here with the FMJs um, <clears throat> also that these are 6.8s or full power loads but that was those were in beautifully in both uh, the uh, the P226 and the G19 so um, and you can see my notes right here uh, good load G19 shot 10 out of that and then I did uh, 40 out of the P226 100% reliable um, the other thing I wanted to note too was these heavy ones with the 45, uh, those were 100% reliable too. Um, did I write that down? No, I didn't. I'll I have to add that in there, but that's very important too. Um, so, and actually, what I believe I'm going to do here, I think I want to sell these on Gun Broker because I don't need to beat up my gun. I don't. I have other plus P hollow points. I don't feel the need. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and list these on Gun Broker. Um, and I will post a link right here, and I'll do. I'll ship them for ten dollars, and I might start them for ten dollars, so somebody can get, you know, some nice hand loads. The other thing that's pretty cool about these, that I like a lot, is that these are some of my original casings, and they're very well cleaned. But some of the staining on the case is, uh, you know, has really left them quite neat looking. But I believe in the, they're, they're they function perfect, and I didn't have any problem shooting these loads except for the. Uh, I, I'll call them a plus P, but um, and then we got a couple of. There's a couple of nickel coated cases in here that are nice new ones we got some nice shiny ones but then that you know there's some um, some old nice you know some ones that have really you know some neat coloration on them, almost like a, a case hardened color but uh that's the last step right there you want to label the box that they're in because you know you know if they sit for a month or a year or two years or ten years you know you want to be able to remember you don't have to write down the caliber. I mean, if you can't look at the back of the case and figure out what it is, you know, maybe you probably shouldn't be reloading. But the big thing that's really important is um, six grains unique right there, 230 grain FMG zero bullets. You know, you could also write down the primer you use because, you know, right now it's just a stainless steel primer stuck in there. Um, but all the primers I run are all uh, all CCI. Um, I have one thing of Remington, but that's for some uh, bench rest 308. 308, I'm not super concerned about those. Um, 
but that's very important to do. If folks, if you like this video right here on uh, reloading the 45 ACP, you know, uh, give me a thumbs up. You know, feel free to subscribe and post any questions below. Uh, that's what we're going to be running them out of right there, the good old 1911. Uh, you know, post any questions below and, uh, you know, get to them quickly. You know, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share them, and uh, thanks for watching.